What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <coughs> so, what up? What up? Make sure everybody go subscribe to the Gonzo Show. You know what I'm saying? Tap that podcast button on your iPhone or go to Google Podcasts or go to Spotify, wherever. Make sure you subscribe to the Gonzo Show. Shit is lit. New episode up right now, Wendy Williams, Drake, and Meek Mills. So, either one or two things is happening right now. One or two things is happening right now. Yeah, I uploaded to YouTube still, but the first few episodes, I'm just, I had to move my set. We just bought a new building, so I had to move my set. But I'm trying to focus on the audio portion, the audio portion. YouTube, they don't pay shit, you feel me? YouTube, they want a nigga to work for them for free. They want to sell all the advertising and, and, and monetize this shit and give you pennies. I'm not really with that shit no more, you know what I'm saying? But I will put my shit, you know what I mean, up there just so y'all could get a taste of it. But I, I need you to go peep the audio version. I need you to go where they podcast and then go peep my shit there, man, so I can get my money. YouTube shit. YouTube is like a big-ass cotton field. YouTube is like a big-ass cotton field. They want you to do all the motherfucking work and pay you crumbs. Well, that's how America was built. And that's how they building YouTube, you know what I'm saying, off the back of our content. Yeah, I push merch. I still push merch. I got, man, make sure y'all go to gonzo.net, you feel me? Gonzo.net got all the fire caution merch, you feel me, and, and, and whatever, you know, all the fire gonzo merch. But look, either one or two things is happening right now with this whack 100 shit. And I'm going to go ahead and say this out of my mouth. I hope, you know, that shit ain't got so bad that even Tyson is playing with Pac name. I hope that he really put hands on this nigga. Because if he using this to promote his podcast, man, then that means the world is officially over with. You feel me? Even they done turned Mike Tyson into a fucking troll. You feel me? But again... I've met Mike a few times. I've met Mike a few times through Pac. <clears throat> Matter of fact, Pac, I mean, Mike Tyson came to the All Eyes on Me tour in, when it was in Cleveland. Stopped at Gundarina. And Pac asked me to bring Mike on stage. I'll never forget, Mike had a jean suit on. But niggas wasn't wearing tight jean suits then. But that nigga Mike was buff as shit. You know what I'm saying? But that jean suit was tight as hell. But all I'm saying is, uh, you know... It's either one or two things, and I don't feel like Mike is one of them type of niggas, because you know what I mean, like, the last of the Mohicans. That's like me having Wack 100 on my podcast and playing around for weight ratings. Like, nah, if he was dumb enough to come, you, you should know you finna get your ass whooped. But, you know, anything's possible, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen stranger shit, so until I see the fucking footage, I'm still kind of on the fence. I want it to be true like a motherfucker. But. Who knows, man. I ain't never known Mike Tyson to fuck around like that, though. (coughs) Nah, he can't sue. He can't sue after all that. Go back in the, in there. I'm gonna hang out with you. You can hang out with me, but Daddy's smoking, so you gotta go back in the backyard until I'm finished. <laughs> one love, baby. One love. One love. One love. 
Man, listen. 40 Glock, that's my nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> 40 Glock was put into a, a situation to where he done what he had to do. <clears throat> Regardless of the fact, that's still my nigga. You know what I'm saying? You can't get in niggas beefs. And, you know, whatever his reasoning was for doing whatever the fuck he did, you know what I mean? I feel like that's his business. But in terms of whack 100, as much shit as he talked about 40 Glock, like that nigga can't do no suing. Can't do no suing or no telling. But you know what? He can, though, because I'm going to tell y'all niggas this. Y'all motherfuckers is fooled by that nigga, not me. Y'all niggas is fooled by the little goofballs that hang around them or run with them. Not me. Like, them niggas is doing it all for the bag. They'd never have a legacy without Tatiana busting it down. Like, and that shit's so garbage. But another thing, people like garbage shit. You feel me? That shit's so fucking garbage. Like, the game is over with. When you got niggas like that selling out arenas... <clears throat> And anybody in their right mind, not mind can see that this ain't no motherfucking skillful rapper. Like, how is niggas winning and they ain't skillful rappers? How do you talk on the track? <clears throat> like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm lost. But we got Tatiana busting it down. <clears throat> what else we got? We got niggas like Wack 100 out here bubbling like he winning. <laughs> talking about Pac so now we got the actual clown card straight winning out here like the act it's the, the other side of the coin it's straight winning I mean you look at I'm gonna tell you on some real shit you know and I want niggas to know this bro I don't, I don't know whoever y'all looking at on their on album covers LA niggas don't dress like that you feel me? Like, I just want that to be known. Like, all you out-of-town niggas on, it's like, who could be the weirdest? Y'all niggas need to let, <clears throat> you know, like, Andre 3000 was the king of that. The king of being different. Let him be different. You know what I'm saying? Like, the rest of you niggas, y'all got to stop letting your stylists dress you, bruh. Niggas is out here looking crazy right now. Crazy. Can you imagine if a nigga showed up to the park, to the dice game, with a, I mean, niggas out here looking way crazy right now. <clears throat> the dress code is all fucked up. It's like, I'm just going to do some different shit. I'm about to just put on some tight pants. No, 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 no. Scratch that. I'm going to put on some tight jogging pants, some dress shoes, and a scarf. And some goggles. Like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to put a fucking a pink wig on. Some bell bottoms. And a wife beater. Like, what? Like, nigga, I'm different. Like, no, you're goofy. You're weird. You're reaching. That is not the culture. You feel me? Like, nigga, nigga put on some straight cleats. Nigga wear some cleats. And I ain't talking about three, I ain't talking about motherfucking three stacks. Three stacks wear that shit, nigga. I'm, I'm fucking with it. I'm talking about you niggas that's not Andre 3000. Lil Uzi Vert. And his name is not Lil Uzi Vert no more. It's Little Floozy Skirt. Little Floozy Skirt goes on stage at Rolling Loud. First off, trying to sound like Michael Jackson Lil son or something. You guys like my purse? You guys like my trip? Who like, I mean, just come out and just say it, like, bro, <clears throat> come out and just say it. Just, you know, little oozy, little floozy skirt. You need to just come out and say it. Little floozy skirt. Listen to me, man. If you are homosexual, little floozy skirt, come out and say it. Like, I would rather you just come out and say it now. Like, just be the first rapper besides Frank Ocean 
But just like, dude, you gay. You gay, dude. You gay, you little floozy skirt. I mean, I'm not, I can't even say that now that I'm, because I don't want gay people to think I'm making fun of them. You little Uzi vert. You gay, bruh. Come out and say it, man. Just just come out and say it, bruh. Just come out and say it, because you're confusing my son. Like, I, I, I explained to my son what gay people is, you know what I mean, and, and how that all works. But you're confusing him. He's three. Lil Uzi, he's three. He's three, Lil Uzi. Come out and say this shit, man. Like, what the fuck, nigga? You got to... My, my son asked me, Daddy, he got a purse on? I said, oh, here we go. I said, now I can't let my nigga... We watching Rolling Loud. You know what I'm saying? My little nigga come ask me, Daddy, is that a purse he got on? I said... Yep, yeah, it's a purse. It's a purse, son. I'm going to have to explain to him. It's gay people, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, that a rock a purse. And, you know, that's a, yeah, it's a purse. But he wants it to be called a man bag. And he wants people to be like, no, it's not a man bag. It's not a purse. Nigga, that's a purse, nigga. You bought that in the female section of Chanel. You spent about five bands, ten, like that was an expensive one too. That nigga got an expensive one. How you? How your purse? How is your man? Ba- your purse? Your merce? Whatever you call it. How is that? You going in there buying a, a a bigger bag than your girl? Like how is your Chanel bag cost more, more than the the girl that's with you? Like, you go in the Gucci store and tell her she could only get one that's worth 1300 You come back won't worth 5000 You's a petty motherfucker. Yo, drip. That nigga, they booed your motherfucking ass off the stage like they were supposed to. They booed your ass off the stage like you walked down the stairs in your grandmama house while your uncles was playing dominoes. Like it with a man purse on, they booed your ass like you walked in the barber shop, nigga, asking, "Do they die? Uh, uh, do they do bangs?" That nigga walked in the barber shop like y'all cut bangs, like nigga get your this nigga type of nigga. Look, nigga look like a a whole bag of barrettes up there. Nigga just look like a whole bag of barrettes. Nigga look like every motherfucking hot comb in my sister's uh, kitchen drawer. Yeah, nigga, I said the kitchen drawer where the hot combs is at. That nigga look like every bitch in the county building when it used to be right there on Florence. Right there across the street from Inglewood Cemetery. That nigga look like every bitch in there. That nigga look like every bitch walking through the alley trying to find that purse with the lights on it at the road and loud after he got booed off stage. What's wrong with you, little oozy flirt? Little scoozy flirt? What what nigga the little floozy skirt? Niggas out here. They booed your motherfucking ass off stage with that wig. Y'all like my drip? No, nigga, that's a purse, nigga. It's called Rolling Loud, nigga. We all high as fuck. High, nigga, waiting for the Tupac hologram to come on. Here come this nigga with a goddamn glowing. And first, why you... It wasn't enough that the nigga had a purse on. He wanted one with neon lights on the side of it. Glowing like Times Square. That nigga said, I'm about to look like 42nd Street for real. That nigga out here, that nigga, little floozy skirt, that nigga be, he type of nigga that tell his assistant, go buy me some Midol, I'm cramping. Like, what, nigga, you, you taking this shit too far. Nigga said, go buy him some Midol, he cramping. I said, oh, this nigga taking it too far. Like, he don't take Tylenol, that nigga take Midol. That nigga was looking like, a, a five game series of hopscotch. What, baby? Okay. Nigga was looking like a motherfucking five game series of hopscotch. Oh, 
sis said a leave is better for cramps. This motherfucker was out here. <laughs> like the, the nigga was doing a sponsor for the nigga was like he was doing a spots for, for Sally's beauty supply. Y'all like my drip? I said, oh, this nigga's taking it too far. <laughs> Why Lil, I bet you Lil Uzi Vert, his Chanel purse con- collection is killing all you bitches. <laughs> like, <clears throat> Sharita, you, you probably even have a problem with Lil Uzi Vert with his purse game. His shit is immaculate. That nigga, that nigga purse game is immaculate. And he got the motherfucking sponsorship through Sally's. So y'all ain't fucking with none of that nigga be coming with the colors, dyes in his hair that y'all ain't even seen yet. Accessories and shit, bangs, bangles, barrettes. Motherfucker have all the motherfucking color rubber bands. Nail polish. He got all the non-toxic nail polish remover. This nigga got all the new homopathic jewelry cleaner. Like every little... Man, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson has always been my hero. Even... When he lost, because I know, you know, men don't win all the time. You can't win all the time, but see, what y'all didn't know about Mike, <laughs> motherfuckers thought Mike, motherfuckers counted Mike out. Niggas, niggas said it was over for Mike. Motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Because they was only gauging him by what they seen him in the ring do, you know what I mean? Thinking his career was over thinking that, you know, how could a man lose all that money, you know, but listen, i tell you this, if I could trade places with any few people in the world, he would be one of them, and I'll tell you why, because if, you know, if you had all that, lost it, you know what I mean, and came back full circle to where now Mike is back killing it, he back killing it, you know what I mean, and probably the only thing that he would change in the world is probably losing his, his 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 child, you know what I mean, a kid. But in terms of the knowledge that he's gained by being Mike Tyson and taking losses and coming back, and I mean, he got to be one of the most powerful motherfuckers on the planet, if you think about it. <clears throat> it's just like sometimes you walk past a bum in the street. You don't, you, you don't, you think he planned to be there? Like, hell no. Nah. But if he sat down and told you his story, I bet you your mind would be fucking blown. Like, wow. Like, motherfuckers be rocket scientists. I'm talking about living some good shit. And, you know, life catches up to you. But when you listen to motherfuckers like that, you know what I mean? It sharpens your tool. You know what I mean? So, I really hope that this, you know, plays out to where it might. Because he already came full circle, but... In terms of just, um, you know, people are, you know, I would I will want his credibility just to stand. Because it's not going to be as sufficient. And, you know, people ain't going to be, I know I won't, if, if this is a, a hoax, you know what I mean? It was, you know, I still fuck with Mike. But, I mean, it's just like I, I would never play with Pac's name like that for publicity. I would never play with Pac's name or legacy for, the, you know what I mean? Like, it can't be that. It can't be that, Mike. You had to put hands on this nigga if you don't already spoke. You know, it's one thing to let WAC 100 troll and play around, but it would break my heart if Mike Tyson, you know, was a fucking co-conspirator in the troll. But... Again, I'm just throwing that out there for, for, for my personal safety of anything could happen, but that's not what I think happened. I don't think that Mike, because I told you, I met this guy before a few times, and um, he don't look like he didn't appear to me as the type of motherfucker that would bake, I mean, break, bend, or fold. You know, I can relate to him, because I'm not breaking, bending, or folding for nothing. 
I'm gonna let you know that right now. So, I relate to Mike. Yeah, Mike got a hella short fuse. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. People change, man. You know what I'm saying? People change. And I've heard him say on a few interviews that, you know, he's not the man that he used to be. Now, I'm not saying in terms of morally, but in terms as a fighter, I don't know what makes motherfuckers tick. Excuse me. I don't know. I'm just saying what's possible. Excuse me. I'm just saying what's possible. Listen, Mike is not to play with niggas. I'm, I know. All I'm saying is, it would just be, you know, uh, uh, but listen, an uh, ass whooping will humble a motherfucker real quick. So all of us being surprised that WAC 100 is being so humble now. But here's the thing. For this one episode, do you think motherfuckers would jeopardize their credibility? I mean, because... After motherfuckers find out the truth, it'll be over. Like, it, I don't think they would just sacrifice everything on this one little fucking episode. That would be stupid, you know what I mean? Because it ain't like niggas will fuck with them after they found out that they was lying. You feel me? So that's like another thing. It's like It ain't like the listeners going to stay once niggas find out it was a hoax. So, you know what I mean? It's not like Mike trying to sell the podcast and get one last hoorah. It is fucking Mike Tyson. He did bite a motherfucking ear off. So, I don't know. I'm rocking with that. You feel me? I'm rocking with the savage beast who bit a motherfucker right in front of my eyes twice. Bit flesh from a nigga ear. You feel me? But anything's possible. Yeah, knowing that video com- coming out, that's what I was thinking, like a nigga doing anything to shit, you feel me? But here's the thing, though. Every dog has his day. And I told you, no man's invincible. I'll say it again. That nigga's not Suge Knight. He's nowhere knit. Like, he don't even, like, that nigga's, he fabricated this whole shit. This whole shit has been fabricated this whole time. You know what I mean? So, if this is a fucking hoax, it wouldn't surprise me because all this shit is fabricated. But even that has to come to an end sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the thing is, he had a good run. He done parlayed him hating on Pac on some random shit into a good run. You know what I'm saying? He, he had a good run. It's time to let that shit go. I bet that shit been beating him down. Feel me? Because how can he not love Pop? Everybody love Pop. Feel me? I bet that shit been wearing him down like like a nigga on the run or something. Hating on Pop probably been so stressful on WAC 100. Like, look at the, the picture of him and, and Mike Tyson. Look at the look in the nigga face. That nigga look wore down, beat down. It's not a day that he don't hear about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably been wearing him down. He had to turn himself in. You feel me? Motherfuckers like, why why he show up at Mike Tyson? Man, that, that nigga, you see niggas been on the run, just turn themselves into the police station, walk right into the front desk. Okay, I got a warrant for my arrest. Police looking at him like, word? For what? Niggas say, Hayden. <laughs> that nigga turned himself in to Mike, he said, I got a warrant for my arrest. Nigga Mike said, for what? The nigga said, Hayden. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> oh, man. Oh, man, that's funny. The nigga said he got it. Man, no, nah, look. Funk Master Flex, man, listen. Funk Master Flex ain't no street dude, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Wack, you know, he needed them knuckles put on him. Funk Master Flex needs to apologize. He don't need... 
I don't know who the fuck that was. Somebody named Jacob. Who's Jacob? If you're on here, Jacob, you know I'm on live right now. And I'm, I can't remember exactly who I was talking to. So don't think I was trying to be rude, but call me back in a second. Yeah, Funk, Funk Flex, he needs to apologize, man. He, you know, and again, he's a radio personality. Whooping his ass ain't gonna do nothing. You feel me? You need him to publicly apologize. Or, you know, at least tell the truth of why he don't like Tupac. Did Pac fuck one of his girls back in the day? or Because that was just way too emotional. And he definitely, he ain't lie. He didn't lie, nigga. And I tell you another thing, <laughs> Funk Flex, you a DJ, man. You was never no street nigga, so it wasn't like you was there, nigga. You wasn't there, so whatever uh, you heard was told to you. You feel me? So you, how you gonna get that emotional about some shit that another nigga could have been lying to you about, nigga? You wasn't there, nigga. You ain't touched the scale in your life. So, he lied. Nah, he ain't lied, nigga. The nigga that told you that lie, lied. You feel me? To gain some, to probably get you to spin a record or some weird shit. But, you know, bottom line is, I can't get mad at a motherfucker for, for uh, you know, the run-ins that they had with Tupac. You feel me? I can't Tupac's enemies when he was on the earth unless they was my enemies at that time. That's retarded. You know what I'm saying? This shit is about disrespecting the dead man. This is not about keeping on the legacy of of above the rim or birdie or 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 bishop. We trying to grow out here, but what I'm not finna do is let a nigga disrespect the honey. That, this ain't about nothing else, you feel me? think if I seen motherfucking Haitian Jack in the club that, you know what I mean, I'd be mad at the nigga, nah, I wouldn't take no pictures with him, you feel me, but I definitely want to talk to the nigga, you feel me, but I wouldn't take no pictures with the nigga, because I know what the public would think, you feel me, and that is what matters, is keeping my nigga legacy alive, you feel me, I wouldn't take no pictures with him. But on some gangster shit, nigga, we'll definitely talk. Let's take a picture. Nah, that ain't cool. We can't take no picture. Feel me? And you know why. Because everybody know that. What niggas would think. And that's all that matters is my legacy. I mean, uh, Pac's legacy. In that situation, it would be bigger than than, than, than than me taking a picture with a nigga for my benefit or to show association. That's That would be wrong. You feel me? But having a conversation with a nigga, sure. Being mad at a nigga, hell no. Nah. That's that's weird. But you know what I'm saying? Like nigga, gotta keep it solid. Cause then it looks like something, and my nigga not here to defend himself. You feel me? So you feel me? That that's that's some real solid shit. You feel me? But motherfuckers act like. You inherit a nigga's beef. You don't inherit a nigga beef unless the other nigga getting disrespectful. But, you know, what happened, happened. I wasn't there. You feel me? But but keeping it solid, it don't, it don't mean being a jerk or a motherfucking do boy. You know what I'm saying? Most of these niggas run around with the, that's my bro, on the fake ass bodyguard shit, just trying to keep a lane to a nigga. Just trying to. Stay close to it, nigga. Nigga, that's my cousin. Like, lying or... Like, nigga, just say that's the homie. You've been knowing the nigga for a few years, and you want to do some business with him. But in the the universe is listening. Every time you lie to a motherfucker, even when you think that you're impressing a motherfucker, and, and you got one off. You ain't get one off. I'm telling you. Universe is listening. All sucker shit gets recorded and played back at a particular time when needed trust me
WAC 100, man, you know, again, he had a good run. And if you ask me, I wouldn't have did it. I wouldn't have did it, you feel me? But talking about a nigga, I mean, look look what he's, what, what he, what he's accomplished for, you know, just infuriating the world. I wouldn't have did it, you feel me? But some people are willing to trade in their integrity for the bag. You know what I'm saying? This is why you got, I don't know why Lil Uzi Vert is wearing a purse. You feel me? But wouldn't it be sad if Lil Uzi Vert actually liked women? And he doing all of this shit just to, you know, fulfill the lane? Wouldn't it be sad if that nigga actually... Little floozy skirt. What if he actually liked women? And he out there as a black man with a fucking purse on. Like, please let him be, yeah, Leroy from fame. He gotta be Leroy from fame. You gotta be Leroy. How you not Leroy? Can you imagine if we seen motherfucking Mike Tyson walk out with a purse? Like the world would go crazy. But Lil Uzi Vert, you got to come out, bruh. You got to come out and say you gay. You just got to come out, man. You can't be walking around here, grown-ass man, black man from Philadelphia, the ghetto, with a fucking purse on, man. You making us look bad, bruh. We, like Steve Harvey said, nigga, we black out here. And I ain't talking about how he was talking. I'm talking about, nigga, we black men out here. And we don't wear purses, my nigga. So, I mean, please explain that to say, you know what, I'm gay. And, you know, we'll say, okay, cool. And, you know, and, and, and we rocking with you. But how you just going to fuck us up like that, my nigga? We black men out here. You putting out videos and you boxing niggas and shit. You riding motorcycles and shit. Like, you trying to do nigga shit. But here it is, you come out with a purse. Meek Mills from Philadelphia, he don't wear no purse. Gilly the Kid from Philly, I never seen him with no purse. Wallow, never seen him with no purse. Cassidy, never seen, mm, it's funny, never seen him with a purse. Wonder why I ain't never seen Tone Trump, never seen him with a purse. Freeway, never seen him with a purse. My man, uh, 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 Oskino, no purse. Why are you the only guy? Beanie Siegel, purseless, no purse, and I could go on and on, shout out to all the Philly guys that's not wearing purses, why ain't nobody tapping this nigga on the shoulder, did he, ha what is he getting too much money now, is he getting too much money now that niggas just can't say nigga with this, I mean what, <clears throat> next nigga do a song with Lil Uzi Vert, I'ma know something. Because it's too, it's too much. It's too much. I don't care how many records he sell. I don't care how many streams he gets you. If you're a black man. And that sort of shit is worth marketing to. Like, like you know, you, you're you going to market that to the little cat. So like, come on, bro. You can't have a little Uzi Vert out here with a purse on until he come out the closet. So. Yeah, I got you, baby. Real shit. You niggas got to come out the closet. What up? Thank you, baby. <clears throat> and I ain't being, you know, I'm not homophobic at all. I just want y'all niggas to stop confusing the kids. You feel me? Because we already got to, you know, we, we explain to them. We got to live with all sort of people in the world. So stop hiding who you are. Because you're confusing these guys. My son's three. I had to explain to him. What the hell you was doing. I'm tired of that. So y'all niggas, make sure y'all go to gonzo.net. What up, Brax? Can you get Falcon? Can you get Falcon? Can I get Falcon? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get him. Make, tell him... Okay, he's out. 
Listen, make sure y'all go to gonzo.net. Make sure y'all go subscribe to my podcast. The shit been going crazy. And when you subscribe, make sure you leave a review, man. You know what I'm saying? Leave a review. Shout out to all my people at the Digital Soapbox Network. We taking over. You know what I'm saying? We taking over. Big Norman Steel, Doggy Diamonds, What's Happening, My Guys. You feel me? Everybody on the network, man. I love y'all. Listen, hard work and determination, man. Hard work and determination. Hard work and determination. You feel me? Hard work and determination. Loyalty supersedes everything. It beats talent. You feel me? Talent ain't shit. If you ain't got, if you ain't consistent, what is talent? Talent means nothing if you're not consistent. I love y'all, man. Peace. I gotta go handle some business. Brax. Hmm, me, 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 me.